Regional Director of ASUS Australia and New Zealand. I'm very looking forward to meet some of you in person after the presentation finishes, finishes up. And I certainly hope that you're going to spare your time with us for the entertainment that we have prepared for you for the night. Right now, it is a very exciting time for ASUS globally and locally. Globally, IBC has ranked ASUS the top five PC manufacturers with a market share of 7.3% and year-on-year -year growth rate of 16.9% in the flat market. And that made ASUS the fastest growing PC vendor in the top five. Locally, we are also seeing this positive energy enthusiasm from our own team and also from the market. In year 2014, we have, met, we have managed a market share, a retail share of 14.5%. And as well, after five years of bringing our first transformer type of product in the market, we have confidence in claiming the solid number one position in the two-in-one device market. That has become definitely a mainstream category in the PC industry nowadays. Over the year, our engineer has improved, further improved our transformer design. It becomes thinner, lighter, longer battery life, and even more affordable. And that literally ticked all the box for end users' needs for their daily computing. And with that, we're seeing end user and user's attention is driven back to the PC category. And interestingly, we're seeing that a resumed consumer confidence and a stabilization in the overall PC industry. Of the entire hybrid device brought to the market, arguably T100 has been one of the most successful ones. Not just its sixth quarter product life cycle in the market. We are talking about a new product every three months here in IT, right? Not just a six quarter product life cycle. In year 2014, we managed to sell through 60,000 units in Australian market alone. That, if we do a quick math, it's 167 units sold every single day. And it helped us not only to take out our mass retail market, it widened up our channel coverage into SMB, education, and even commercial sectors. So today, we are proudly present you our new transformer range, that's Transformer Book G. Adam will cover the product more in depth in the following section, and I hope you spare some time, touch and feel the product, give us your feedback, and you also see Zenfone, Zenbook, gaming series, all the other range we're gonna bring into Australian market in a very, uh, very short time. Hi everybody. I hope you have a wonderful journey here. Um, as Martin mentioned, my name is Adam and I'm part of the product management team here at ASUS Australia. Today, uh, I'm pretty proud to be here to unveil to you guys for the first time here locally, um, our latest flagship product. And over the course of the next few minutes, I'm going to explain to you why we believe this product is so special. So I'll jump straight into it. The Transform Book Cheap. First officially announced at CES earlier this year, just a couple of weeks ago. We, we find this product extremely special to us because of this unique blend of beauty and performance. It's a, it's a detachable two-in-one device that uses a full Windows 8.1 operating system and holds a 12.5 inch display. The product itself is the slimmest 12 and a half inch Windows tablet. The tablet itself is only 7.6 millimeters in thickness and weighs just under 750 gram. Even, even with the dock, you only have 16 and a half millimeters in thickness. So, so why make it so thin? We've really designed the product to be mobile, but really without sacrificing the performance. I'm sure many of you guys travel here and travel quite frequently, and I know I do. 
I could imagine having this advice and almost forgetting it. This is it's my carry on. But not only that, it's really the design. It's crafted with careful, uh, careful craftsmanship. It uses a full aluminium unibody and has diamond cut edges on the side, really to highlight the slimness of the device, but still keeping it that premium feel that you'd expect. The screen is stunning. We used a WQHD screen, which is four times the resolution you'd get in your standard HD to give you that ultimate quality and that better color clarity you'd want. Sound-wise, we use our Sonic Master technology. We, we've paired some carefully selected hardware along with our unique software solutions to really deliver the outstanding sound that it deserves, but still being able to keep it distinct. We've used three millimeter speakers on either side to give you that surround sound. Performance-wise, Yes, we've selected to use our latest Intel Core M processors to quietly achieve more and to enable us to create such a thin bandless design. It gives you that better productivity that you require if you're on the run or just enhances on your entertainment experience. It, it really easily outperforms other leading tablets in the market. And yes, yes, I've mentioned it's thin, but it still carries that battery life that you really want in a mobile device. So on the Full HD model, you'll see up to an eight hours battery life. And on the WQHD model, you'll have up to seven hours on battery life. Not, not only that, the device itself in standby mode can last up to 12, uh, sorry, two weeks. Two weeks on standby mode. keyboard. It's a full-size keyboard. And we've really taken the feedback from our customers and designed it in a way that we kept two things in mind. We kept it simple and durable. We've used the, most, the strongest magnets on earth to design this hinge. And we've tested it in a swing test over 20,000 times and on an open and close test 25,000 times. Not only that, we've gone that little extra step forward and decided to use a wireless Bluetooth connectivity to give you that extra bit of flexibility should you want to use the keyboard away from the tablet and detached. I could imagine myself again on the couch having it connected to my telly and operating it that way. But, I mean, to summarize, the T300G is our flagship two-in-one device is running the Windows 8.1 full system and it's really ultra lightweight and ultra portable but it still got that beauty and the performance that you need. In Australia we will have two SKUs. We'll start off at uh, 1299 with a full HD and 4 gig of RAM SKU and at 1599 we'll have the WQHD with 8 gig of RAM solution along with an active stylus. And yes, yeah, the keyboard's included in that. Welcome and good afternoon. Uh, my name is Chetan Gohul. I'm part of the Intel team that looks after various user experiences initiatives for Asia Pacific Japan. So I'm responsible for the APJ region in particular. Um, my scope includes ensuring ecosystem readiness when we bring some of these new technologies to the market with customers like ASUS. Now, ASUS has been one of our most innovative OEM customers by long shot. Uh, we started our two-in-one journey a few years ago with the Transformer series, and you can see such an exciting and impressive product we have to offer, which is launching in the Australian market today. What I'm going to do today is give you a sneak preview of one of our new technologies that, I'm, that we are very excited about. Uh, it's called Intel RealSense 3D Camera Technology. 
before I go into a few details about that and show you what it can do uh, with a brief demonstration, I just wanted to show you a quick video and paint a picture of our vision where we want to go with this technology. We used to tap. Then we clicked. Now we touch. All of our content resting at the surface. But the world is not flat. This is kind of give you an idea of where we are heading with this particular technology. So at a very bare minimum, what is RealSense, right? So RealSense is world's first and smallest fully integrated 3D camera module for the PC devices. Imagine some of the gaming console 3D camera systems that are in the market right now, which look like a brick, weigh like a brick, require their own power supply, and offer an okay experience. Shrinking that down to something that fits on a bezel of a notebook or an all-in-one device is what we've done with RealSense. I'm going to show you a couple of demos uh, with an in-production system from ASUS called N551, and I have several new systems over there in the back in the demo area that you can play with and interact with. Those are also production samples of the systems that will be coming to the market. Some of these systems are already shipping in North America and in Europe, and these will be coming to Australia in the second half, as Martin mentioned earlier. But what can we do with 3D? Right? That's the question everybody asks. So our idea is to, our vision is to bring really true, truly lifelike, immersive, intuitive, natural user experiences to the PC. Mm -hmm. Something that wasn't feasible just a couple of years ago. We've been working and perfecting this technology for the last three years, and we are now ready to go to market with partners like Asus on that. So in terms of what you can do with this technology, uh, we are focusing on three broad areas or user experience usages as such. One is about capture and share. The second is about gaming and play and entertainment and education. And the third one is about interacting naturally with the PCs, uh, immersive collaboration, and I'll talk more about each of these. Let's talk about capture and share. What is capture and share? So the idea here is, as it shows in the picture there, being able to capture in 3D, in three dimension, objects, people, environment, surrounding spaces, as you saw in the video as well. What can you do with that next? You have 3D scan image or a file, which you can then import into additional software. You can manipulate the file, you can edit it, you can add more features to it, you can 3D print it. So an example would be, as it's shown in the picture here, you have a shoe that's being 3D scanned using this technology. Now you're able to order a custom fit shoe from an online retailer, for example, without having to go to a physical store. Uh, another example of scanning would be facial scan, and I'll show you the demo of that as well. It's one way of ensuring security when you log into a device or a website or an online account using your full 3D facial scan. This technology can scan and track 78 different points on your face. So it's very difficult to spoof it because it's in 3D. It's, it's virtually non-hackable unless the person is right in front of you. If you were to cut the head off and put it in front, that's the only way you can do it. The second example, uh, gaming, which is obviously a very big market, not just for the children, but also for PC gamers out there, uh, what you can do with that is you use your hands and fingers and your head and your expressions. Use these gestures to basically interact with objects and people and characters uh, that are part of the game. So you can have a racing game where you are gesturing and using your hands to drive. You have a first person shooting game, you can use your hand gestures to shoot, etc. So those are the kind of usages we are after. The third one is about, as I said, naturally interacting with the PC. So think of it. You are in your home playing your favorite music off of your playlist uh, and it's streaming from your compute device like 
D300G, for example, you wanted to skip or pause or play the music again or skip forward or go back, you can just use your hand gestures to do that using this technology. Similarly, you can manipulate and scroll through your media library. You can scroll through your website pages. You can scroll through documents. You can flip through slides without having to have the clickers using the 3D sensing technology. So those are the very broad areas of usages. We are working with hundreds of ecosystem, uh, ISO ecosystem and app developer partners to bring applications that will come to market with these systems. I'm just going to give you a brief preview of some of these usages. I'm going to show you a demo for each of these three categories, just to give you an idea. And then again, you are free to, uh, you're welcome to try out all of these in the systems that we have in the demo area as well. Right? So let's go with it. So as I said, this is the ASUS N551 system. This is already shipping in Europe and part of North America. Uh, I've got three different apps that I'm going to show you here. I'm going to start with something called Intel RealSense out-of-box experience. So this is the application which comes preloaded with a Intel RealSense enabled device. And it's, it's basically teaching the end user how to interact with a new technology like this. How do you position yourself in front of the camera? How do you use hand gestures? How do you use motion? Things like that. So while it's initializing, it's, I'm in front of the camera, it's tracking me. It's got a 3D depth image of me. It doesn't look as pretty on the screen right now, but it's for the camera to see. And I'm gonna basically bring my hands in front of the camera and show you how you can interact with the system. I'm doing this all hands free right now. So now, just using my hands, I can create ripples in the water, play with the water, interact with it. Again, no touch, it's all hand gestures and fingers. This is tracking 22 different points on both my hands and fingers. So it's very accurate in terms of position and what you do with it. I can interact with crystals like that. So this is sort of introducing the end user for the first time to what this can do. Just to give you an example real quick. All right, let's look at another one. I'm gonna play a simple game. Again, using my hands and gestures. And the objective of this game is to basically take little characters like hoplites from across the valleys and avoid the rocks and things like that. So again, I'm going to use my hand gestures to start again. I've got my hand here, it's tracking me. So what I can do is I can take the rocks, move them out of the way. I can carry this little hoplite, take it with me. I didn't do it fast enough and I don't. Let's try another level, a little bit easier. All right, I'm gonna give, give it a shot one more time. Move on to the next one. So again, just using my hands, taking it home. But I've got two more to go and I'm going to run out of time, not clear the level. So increasing difficulty level as you go past multiple levels and I drop it. All right, just to give you a quick idea of what kind of games are possible. And this is just a quick preview. The third one I'm going to show you is the facial scanning app. This is the one where usages are almost limitless. And this is where you'll see the software ecosystem, the ISV is innovating a lot. So this is an app called 3DMe from a company called 3D Systems. So it comes preloaded with a few characters, but when you buy the application, it has a lot more. All right, so let's see, what do you guys like? Ghostbusters, Star Trek, Princess, which one? Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters, all right, let's do that. So it already has a few avatars that I created in there, so I'm not going to use those. But I'm going to start a new scan using this particular character. So you can obviously play with it. It's got my face in it. I'm going to do a new scan. I'm going to position myself in front of the camera. It just shows how you're supposed to do it, so I'm going to skip that part. So that's me. It's capturing. Now I'm going to scan my face.
and it's done. It's got my 3D facial scan. Look at how quickly this did it. And this is where you can see the performance matters. I'm just gonna save this file. And now I'm gonna go look at the character that I chose and how I look at that in 3D. I can just do a little clip and play it out, how it looks like. And this is again for demo purposes, but the idea here is what you can do with this 3D persona that I created. I can import it into games. I can create my own social media profile using something like this with my favorite character like NBA, NBA basketball player or a cricket player or a famous character from a movie. Limit, again, limitless possibilities there. And then you can also uh, set it up as your uh, a souvenir. So for example, I can print it out in 3D because I have the complete 3D file. So these are just some examples of what you can do with this technology. All right. Uh, I will stress uh, that I mentioned earlier that this technology will be available uh, in some product in the second half of the year. Uh, it's not across all of this product, but uh, thank you very much for the presentation. But that concludes uh, the formal part of the, the presentation. I'll now open up the floor for some questions and I'll invite uh, both Adam and Portia to the stage. Hi, yeah, thanks to Alex Sahadavroy from ITY. I was just intrigued when you said it had the world's strongest magnets. I was thinking, what does that mean if you've got a portable hard disk or you put your wallet in your bag, are you gonna, are you gonna zap it? It's, it's, a, it's a really good question. Uh, we do use an SSD, but in terms of details, we're probably better off having an offline discussion on that one. Sure, I mean, it's just that I've, I'm pretty sure I've wiped one of my credit cards, I had to get a new one. But I didn't mean SSD in the yeah. unit, I meant like a portable hard disk, and then they sell them. And that's, it's a worry. Again, it's a good question. Um, I don't have an answer for you right now, but we can have the discussion later. We can always try with your credit card. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you. Thank you. Can you tell me what the requirement in a product is in order for it to support real sense? Real sense? Let me take that one. So currently, the RealSense technology is enabled on all Core I-based systems. Uh, we are going to enable it on our Atom product line in the second half of the year as well. Does that answer your question? Or do you need more specifics as to what kind of system integration is required? Um, that's more or less it. So are you saying it's supported in the Core i5? Three five seven, and also, right. what about the new X three five seven? We are still evaluating, working through the details on that. Right. Uh, so, does it depend on processor speed and capability? It depends on prices, capabilities, and also the performance requirements of the applications themselves. Okay. So, you know, make sure that we go through all of those. So, beyond the CPU and the system and the camera, mm -hmm. um, is there a, an additional hardware component, an IC or a controller or whatever that is part of the real sense? The module itself, the camera module itself, it consists of multiple cameras. It's got the left and right 3D cameras. It's got the uh, full 1080p 2D camera. It's got the infrared light sensors to capture the scene. And it's got a custom ASIC, uh, a module that does all these real-time calculations. So you saw how quickly it did the scan of my face right in real time. So a lot of the apps require a 3D depth image or the map being available as it, as it sees it in real time. And it's all Thanks. done on the module itself. Yeah, sorry, this is um, another question regarding the Intel RealSense. Um, how is that, um, the one that you demoed there, how is that different to the one that you're shipping with tablets, such as the Dell Venue uh, 8 has the Intel RealSense camera as well, but it can't do scanning and things like that. So is there different SKUs, different variants? Like how? Good question. Is there a tablet-specific version, a laptop-specific version? Good question. So we have three different camera solutions in the RealSense portfolio right now. What I showed you today was a front-facing camera solution. There is a rear-facing camera solution which basically enables all the usages that I talked about in a detachable tablet, T300 kind of form factor. Mm -hmm. It'll eventually get into smartphones as well down the line. Yeah. And then there is the third solution which is called R100 with the RealSense snapshot capability. That's the one you alluded yeah. to with the... That's uh, and that's a very specific usage for image capture. So what it does is it captures the images in 3D and then afterward you have the ability to post-process uh, refocus at different points in the image, measure distances and things like that, and add more effects. But it can't do full motion 3D video capture like what this one does. Yeah, yeah. 
And uh, just one quick question as well. Um, how does the hand, tra in terms of the hand tracking, um, how does that differ from what the guys like Elite Motion are doing with their, with their peripheral? Uh, the fundamental difference is those are external solutions, first yeah. of all, right? So it's an accessory. But some of them come integrated as well with some HP laptops and stuff like that as well. That's yeah. right. Yeah. But the fundamental difference is uh, the unique IP that we have and all the processing that's done in real time uh, uh, with respect to the 3D depth map that we're creating. Yeah. That's where the fundamental difference is. Okay. Whereas the Leap Motion doesn't use a camera technology. It uses, I think, uh, radio signals and other stuff. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, so the Qi was debuted, or at least when I saw it the first time originally. Yes, so the initial, I guess, announcement in Computex was a prototype, and we didn't specify what processor we were going to use, as that was still in discussion, but since uh, we have decided to go with Core M, and hence the slight delay. So that was always the plan, to make it a Core M product? Yes, correct. And how are you finding the Core M? Are you, is there, um, are you you're using Intel um, processors in your... Zen phones as well. Yes. So, could you talk a little of the Asus Intel relationship and mobility and future plans? Yeah, um, obviously, Asus and Intel have gone many years back, back in even our transform books and, and so on. Um, we see Core M as bridging that gap for the extra mobile devices, those that require that additional battery life and performance, but in a really mobile form factor. And that's where Core M fits for us. Any other questions? Any other questions? I'm going to use the, uh, the 3D motion camera. Things like Connect, thanks. Things like Connect, um, there's a lot of teething issues. A lot of people have a, a hard time actually to get it work. So, how, how are you finding it? Are people kind of getting the hand? Their hand across it really quickly, or again the three thing. I think I'll okay. Sure. So briefly answer that. So these are new systems that have just launched to the market, right? And some parts of the world, we are in the process of conducting post purchase purchase research on some of these pilots that we are conducting and getting the feedback on exactly what the first week or first day of user experience is like for the end customers and gathering all the data. So far, the data that we've seen, the initial results we've seen, it looks pretty impressive. We haven't seen any red flags in terms of people feeling sick or not able to adjust to the new mode of uh, interacting with the systems and things like that. But the key thing, uh, you, since you mentioned Connect, I want to point out is the accuracy that you get with this solution is way, way better, and the amount of tracking you can do at the finer points of the face and hands and all that is where the unique value is. Uh, you can do a lot more in a PC form factor when you're in close proximity as well as in a tablet form factor when you're trying to scan your surroundings.